This episode has been sponsored by Medium D Speaks. Last year, I made this episode titled, What is Speculative Evolution? I got a ton of good questions in the comments. One of them really stuck out to me, made by Huang. Do you have any tips on how to start a speculative evolution project? I'm thinking of doing one, but I don't know where to begin. Although I gave her a reply at the time, I always felt it deserved a full video response. This episode is going to be a sequel to that video, so I encourage you all to check it out. In summary, speculative biology is a genre of science fiction that explores the evolution and ecology of fictional organisms. If you want to develop a speculative biology project of your own, the first thing you need to do is decide what your prompt is. What is the core of this project? Speculative biology can be roughly broken down into the following four categories, which can help you figure out where your project lies. Speculative future, alternate prehistory, seed world, and xenobiology. Speculative future is, in my opinion, the easiest category to get a foundational understanding of how speculative biology works. It's very straightforward. A lot of projects do this in increments. What will Earth, flora, and fauna look like in 5 million years? 15? 100? Gives you a lot of wiggle room while still having a solid foundation to build on, since we already have a lot of knowledge of the appearance and behavior to explore, so it's easier to extrapolate the behaviors and anatomy of descendants. In a warm, wet future, might alligators become the top predators of North America, spreading into Canada as rising sea levels turn much of our continent into brackish wetlands? If most predators die out from the same extinction event that takes out humanity, might we see a clade of predatory lagomorphs descended from hares establish themselves as the new apex predators? Feral cats seem more likely, but stranger things have happened. I imagine any surviving domesticated species would have a population advantage in at least some human extinction scenarios. There's a lot of open playground to be built upon from a single base, and it is a prompt I recommend to anyone wanting to start exploring speculative biology. After Man by Dougal Dixon is not only a foundational text of speculative evolution, it is a perfect example of this speculative future category. The illustrations in this one are highly evocative, and many have become icons of speculative biology, including the filter-feeding penguins, lagomorphs analogous to deer, and a bat-turned-auditory apex predator that influenced the concept of Primeval's future predators, the aliens from A Quiet Place, and the makers of silence in Kai Shell. Alternate prehistory is, of course, popular, with the most common being what if the dinosaurs never went extinct. You can consider others, such as what if the cooling event that led to the Ice Age never happened, or further back, pondering how things might be different if the Permian extinction never occurred. Something that far back can be open to all sorts of interesting possibilities of speculation. This premise was of course a central component to Chimere, the setting of my own project. Dixon also made an alternate prehistory book with the New Dinosaurs, which explores how Dinosauria might have evolved had the KT extinction event not occurred. There's also Seed Worlds, a concept obviously near and dear to my heart. Seed World projects are built on the premise that life on Earth is placed on another planet and allowed to evolve on a distinct trajectory than it did on Earth. In alternate prehistory, you can expect that, for example, if the Permian era never occurred, maybe dinosaurs never evolved, or at least never got bigger than a cat. With a Seed World project, you can have both groups coexisting. In Chimere, I chose to have the portal transcend space, not time, so the descendants of Permian harvests are still quite different than their ancestors. If you want a Seed World project that throws together all of your favorite prehistoric creatures from across time, go right ahead. There's no reason your Seed World can't transcend space and time. You can set aside land masses for each of your favorite eras, or throw them all together to speculate how they might stabilize over time. Xenobiology is, in my opinion, the most challenging category. 
it can be very difficult to make alien life in a way that is convincing. Although Chimere is most notable for basically function as an alternate history project using a seed world, Xenobiology is the how. Chimere is a distant planet inhabited by hives of microbes that in the distant past sent swarms to Earth and started harvesting them to be replicated on Chimere. Developing the entire evolution of indigenous Chimeran life took a lot more time and speculation than even the most basal and ancient Earth life on Chimere. For another planet to independently develop life with a cell-like structure struck me as close to Earth life as I wanted to go. Multicellular life is not indigenous to Chimere. Although hive-like swarms of unicellular organisms do bind with larger single-celled organisms, and replicated multicellular organisms from Earth were host to these interconnected hives. The closest Chimere got to indigenous multicellular organisms are floating or stationary colonies of several hundred to many thousand different individual cells of many different species. They may resemble multicellular organisms, but technically they're more analogous to a coral reef where a bunch of different organisms from different species work together to make a structure. So often, especially in popular media, xenobiological organisms take convergent evolution to an extreme, presenting six-limbed animals that in most, if not all, other respects look like wolves, or cephalopods that are humanoid even though there's no biological reason for aliens to be cephalopods, much less look like us. This can simply be artistic shorthand to convey to viewers that this creature is alien, or that this alien is quite human. I want to be clear that in that context it's not bad, even great to show something inhuman but a way that will cultivate empathy. If the point is to show something different in ancestry but easy to empathize with, such designs can be useful as serving their narrative. Good literary devices, but it's not good speculative biology. More often than not, it just comes off as lazy creature design. To make convincing and interesting aliens, it can be helpful to build from the ground up, considering ways other than what we have on Earth to make multicellular organisms. One way you might approach this is a composite organism of a bunch of different sorts of cells. As you do this, convergent features like limbs to move through space often make a lot of sense, but don't give them eyes and noses just because we have them. Consider other ways that they might experience their environment, like a light-sensing disc on its back paired with photosynthesizing organs, or a different analog to taste in their feet for determining soil health as they gather nutrient supplements. Maybe their entire body is a sequence of tubes and they move with hydraulic pressure, filling and emptying fluid sacs to shift their limbs and orient the disc as they move. There are some really exceptional xenobiological projects out there with multicellular organisms. Phtanum B by Paul has some truly unique and impressive designs for multicellular organisms, and I highly suggest you all check it out if you're looking to create a truly unique xenobiology project. His organisms have a structure based on silicon instead of carbon, and he has come up with some really interesting and original analogs to locomotive and sensory anatomy. Developing the base of your work is, in my opinion, the hardest part. Once you have your prompt, the foundation of your project, the rest will come easier as you draw logical next steps going forward. Building up from a solid base will make each step easier. Also something really important to keep in mind, this is a lot of fun. Your project doesn't need to have a complicated backstory or explanation. It can be something you dabble in now and then. Completely valid. I love seeing how many people are kicking back and enjoying their own projects, often for no other reason than it brings them joy. Pure serotonin right there. Go for it. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Thank you so much to Medium D Speaks for this sponsorship, and to my Patreon patrons for their continued support that makes these videos possible. Have an incredible day, folks. Cheers!